behind closed doors in America, an offer was placed on the table. It wasn't small. It wasn't casual. We're talking multi-millions of dollars, the kind of deal that could set up generations. And at the center of it all was a man from Zimbabwe, Maxwell Chikambutso. The U.S. expected him to say yes. But Maxwell stunned everyone with a single word. No! Who is Maxwell? Maxwell isn't your typical inventor. From humble beginnings, he built machines that experts swore were impossible. Self-powered radios, drones, generators, even a car that never needs charging. His work earned him attention not just in Africa, but across the world. And with attention came interest. Interest from those who wanted to control him and his inventions. The American approach. According to insiders, a group of American investors, backed quietly by government figures, flew Maxwell to a secret meeting. Their message was simple. Hand over your technology. Name your price. We'll make you a very rich man. For most people, that kind of offer would have been impossible to resist. But Maxwell? He listened carefully and then refused. The reason behind? No. To understand why, you have to know history. Time and again, groundbreaking technologies have been buried, hidden away to protect the interests of oil giants, energy cartels, and powerful nations. Maxwell knew what accepting those millions really meant. It wasn't about helping him. It was about burying his work forever. The fallout, the refusal sent shockwaves. The Americans didn't expect a man from Zimbabwe to turn down what most would call a once-in-a-lifetime chance. But for Maxwell, it wasn't about money. It was about purpose. And this choice, this single no, would change the trajectory of his life and perhaps the world. America's response. The rejection didn't just sting. It unsettled powerful people. When Maxwell said no, it wasn't just a refusal. It was defiance. Whispers spread quickly across the corridors of influence. Who is this man who dares reject us? Who is backing him? And how do we deal with him? Soon, strange things began happening around Maxwell. Surveillance cars parked near his home. Phone calls that cut off suddenly. Emails that disappeared. It was clear he had stepped into dangerous territory. The pressure mounts. Officials tried a softer approach. Another offer came in, this time through intermediaries. They promised not just money, but safety, patents, international prestige. But Maxwell knew the game. Every offer came with invisible strings attached. Strings that would pull his technology out of Africa and into the vaults of corporations that would never allow it to see the light of day. And once again, he said no. The threats begin. It wasn't long before the tone shifted. Anonymous warnings reached him. Friends whispered that he was being followed. Even some of his closest allies urged him to reconsider, to take the money and protect himself. But Maxwell didn't flinch. He had already made his choice. The world deserved to see what he built, no matter the cost. The global ripples. Word spread fast. An African inventor had turned down America's millions. For some, it was unthinkable. For others, it was a spark of hope. In African cities, young engineers celebrated him as a hero. In America, skeptics doubled down, calling his inventions unscientific and impossible. But behind closed doors... Even those skeptics were shaken, because if Maxwell truly had what he claimed, then their entire world order was at risk. China enters the picture. In the East, eyes were watching carefully. China had already positioned itself as a global leader in electric vehicles, but Maxwell's self-powered car represented something far greater, an energy revolution. While America tried to buy silence, China sought partnership. Delegates quietly reached out to Maxwell not with money alone, but with promises of research facilities, manufacturing power, and global exposure. Africa's pride awakens. Back home, Maxwell's rejection of America lit a fire. For decades, African inventors have been overlooked, their ideas dismissed or stolen. But now, the narrative shifted. Here was an African man standing tall, saying no to the wealthiest nation on earth. Not out of arrogance, but out of principle across Zimbabwe and beyond. He became a symbol of hope, proof that Africa could lead in technology, not just follow. Europe's divide. In Europe, reactions were mixed. Some saw Maxwell's work as a threat to energy markets, 
fearing the collapse of oil and gas profits. Others whisper of opportunity, a chance to break free from dependence on fossil fuels and American tech monopolies. But one thing was clear. Europe could not ignore Maxwell anymore. His name had become a headline in every major capital. The skeptics fight back. Of course, skeptics weren't silent. Leading scientists in the West doubled down, calling his inventions a clever illusion or pseudoscience. But their arguments grew weaker each time the car was spotted on the streets of Harare, moving without a single drop of fuel or moment of charging. And the louder the skeptics shouted, the more ordinary people began to believe Maxwell might be onto something real. The turning point approaches. As the world debated, something large was brewing. Rumors spread that Maxwell was preparing a global reveal, a live demonstration that no one could deny, not even the most hardened critics. The stakes were rising, and every major power, America, China, Europe, and Africa itself, wanted no one thing. Where would Maxwell make his next move? The race to control Maxwell. As whispers of a global reveal spread, a silent race began. Intelligence agencies placed Maxwell under constant watch. Corporate spies tried to infiltrate his circle. And world governments, desperate not to be left behind, began offering him safe havens, secret laboratories, and alliances that stretched far beyond money. The shadow games. Some offers came in the open. Others were delivered through middlemen, whispered in hotel corridors and private jets. A promise of protection from Europe. Unlimited funding from Asia. And from the Middle East, oil giants offering to partner. But really hope and control. But Maxwell had seen this play before. Every handshake came with invisible chains. And once again, he chose silence over surrender. The village that lit up. While the world's most powerful fought for his attention, Maxwell quietly turned his focus to where it mattered most. Home. In a remote village, people who had lived in darkness suddenly lit their homes, powered not by diesel or coal, but by his self-powered generators. Children studied under bright lights. Families charged phones without fear of blackouts. For Maxwell, this was the proof he needed, not for the elites, but for the people. America's growing frustration. Meanwhile, across the Atlantic, America's frustration boiled. How could man from Zimbabwe, without corporate backing or billions in funding, resist their offers and keep building? Whispers grew louder in D.C. boardrooms. If money can't sway him, what will? Pressure? Sanctions? Or something darker? The Silent Convoy. One evening, locals reported seeing a convoy near Maxwell's workshop. No official insignias. No plates. Just silence. Rumors spread that America wasn't just watching anymore. They were preparing to act. But what they didn't expect was that other nations were also closing in, each determined to claim a piece of the man who had just said no to the most powerful nation on earth. The night of the silent convoy. The convoy rolled in quietly. No sirens. No flags. Just black SUVs moving with surgical precision. Locals whispered that these weren't ordinary visitors. Some said American agents. Others believed rival nations had sent their own operatives. But one thing was certain. They weren't there to applaud Maxwell. They were there to control him. Unexpected visitors. Inside his workshop, Maxwell worked late into the night, as he often did. Then a knock. Not one, but several. Standing at his door were strangers in suits, speaking in careful tones. They didn't introduce themselves. They didn't need to. Their message was clear. Time is running out. Decide, or we will decide for you. A clash of powers. What unfolded that night wasn't a conversation. It was a clash of powers. The Americans wanted control. The Chinese wanted partnership. And Africa wanted protection for its son. For the first time, Maxwell realized the magnitude of the storm he had unleashed. This wasn't about cars anymore. It wasn't even about technology. It was about who would control the future of power itself. The hidden broadcast. But what they didn't know was that Maxwell had already made his move. Hours before the convoy arrived, he had uploaded encrypted files, videos, and schematics to servers across the world. If anything happened to him, the world would see everything. No one could bury his work anymore. The clock had started ticking. The world holds its breath. By dawn, the rumors had spread. 
Something had happened near Maxwell's base. Surveillance drones reported unusual movements. Journalists rushed to the area. And in capitals around the world, officials held their breath. Was this the moment Maxwell would finally reveal his technology to the masses? Or would the forces closing in on him silence the most disruptive inventor of our time? The morning after, when dawn broke, the air fell heavier than usual. The night silence had given way to a storm of speculation. Reporters camped outside Maxwell's compound, their microphones trembling with anticipation. Satellite images had already leaked online, showing a black SUV stationed around his village. Conspiracy theories ignited instantly. Had he been taken? Was he negotiating? Or had the fight for his invention already begun? The encrypted countdown. Behind closed doors, Maxwell's plan was already in motion. The encrypted files he released were tied to a countdown. If he didn't manually reset the system every 48 hours, his technology, blueprints, prototypes, test footage would be broadcast to the world. Governments knew it. Corporations knew it. And that ticking clock became a weapon even more powerful than his self-powered car. Global reactions. In Washington, alarm bells rang. In Beijing, strategy rooms filled with smoke and whispers. In Europe, energy CEOs saw their billion-dollar empires trembling. Maxwell Chikambutso had turned a village workshop into the center of a global crisis. And the world was listening. Africa's silence stand. But while the great powers maneuvered, Africa stood quietly behind him. Local chiefs declared Maxwell's work a national treasure. Ordinary villagers, many of whom had seen his inventions light up their homes, formed human shields around his workshop. This wasn't just about technology anymore. It was about dignity, sovereignty, and the right of Africa to write its own future. The leak begins. The countdown hit zero. And then it happened. Screens across the globe lit up with Maxwell's schematics, the blueprint of the self-powered car. Engineers gasped. Scientists shook their heads in disbelief. Energy corporations froze, realizing their monopoly had been shattered. The secret they thought could be buried was now a gift to the world. The American response. In Washington, panic met fury. The multi-million dollar offer they thought was generous now seemed like a desperate bribe. And Maxwell's refusal was no longer just defiance. It was an open challenge to the order of power itself. Tesla stocks dipped overnight. Oil executives went silent. For the first time in decades, America wasn't leading the conversation about the future of energy. The Chinese gamble. In Beijing, the message was different. They didn't see chaos. They saw opportunity. The leaked files gave them a head start. But without Maxwell himself, the heart of the technology remained untouchable. China moved swiftly, announcing billion-dollar investments in self-powered transport. But the world knew the truth. They were racing in a game Maxwell had already won. Maxwell's return. And while global power scrambled, Maxwell emerged from his workshop, not as a fugitive, not as a victim, but as a symbol. To Africa, he was a son who refused to sell his soul. To the West, he was a rebel who rewrote the rules. To the world... He was proof that innovation doesn't come from wealth. It comes from courage. The legacy. Months later, the ripple effects could no longer be denied. Villages that once lived in darkness were now lit by clean, endless energy. Self-powered buses rolled through African cities, free from fuel costs. And slowly, even in America, pressure mounted for Tesla and others to follow Maxwell's lead. The man who said no to a multi-million dollar offer gave the world something greater, freedom. The final word, some things are bigger than money. Some things are meant to be shared. Power doesn't belong to one man, one company, or one nation. It belongs to humanity.